Hey everybody, my name is Matt with We're in the Rockies and my wife Cheryl is behind the camera. Today we are at the Georgetown Loop Railroad in Georgetown, Colorado. We just finished our pretty cool train ride here in Georgetown. And we wanna give you 10 things to know about this before you come and ride this train just so you can know if this is the right experience for you. Georgetown is a charming small town located about an hour away from Denver. It's most visited for its Georgetown Loop Railroad, one of several old timey railroads in Colorado. Most of these railroads were once used for mining, but what makes Georgetown unique is that the line was originally established as a scenic ride for tourists way back in the 1800s, making it one of Colorado's first visitor attractions. It helped open the Rocky Mountains for sightseers. So the first thing to know is that it is popular. It sells out. I was quite amazed when we arrived here that the parking lot was just packed. And so that's something to know is that you need to get your tickets in advance. You can book them online on their website. We'll go over pricing and a few details later, but just know that it's popular. And something I'm really discovering is that train rides in general are extremely popular. People love traveling on trains and I can see why it's really cool. They go through the mountains with some really beautiful views. They give you that kind of just old time feeling. You get to enjoy the scenery without having to drive and, and do the steering wheel and all that. The next thing to know about this railroad, it is, is a short ride. You only go 4.5 miles and the whole trip only takes one hour and you even get a 15 minute little break midway through included in that one hour. So you really only spend about 45 minutes on the train ride which I thought was actually kind of perfect for my family. There's actually another train ride in the sister city of Leadville that is an hour and a half long, but it was $25 more. And after reading some reviews, I decided this was the best pick for my family and I, I'm glad I did it. Now, if you've gone on the other rail line in Leadville, please leave in the comments and let us know. I'm sure other people would love to know your experience so that they can pick the best ride for them. Okay, the next thing is about the passenger cars. So the passenger cars that you'll be riding in here, there are a variety of different styles of cars along that track there. Some of them are, are open, actually, the entire thing is open. So if you end up sitting in one of those, bring a hat or something like that, because even though the temperature isn't very hot today, it feels hot in the sun. So it does kind of bake on you up here high in the mountains. It's a little weird, the sun is. But, uh, but some of them are open top, some of them are closed top, but they have open windows. And then some of them have a few windows that are open and a few that are closed. So there's kind of a variety there that you might end up sitting on. So just be aware of the kind of the different styles there, okay? While we're on the topic of cars, be aware that the seating is first come first serve. So if you're wanting to kind of pick out your perfect seat, get here early probably 30 to 45 minutes early would be my guess i think we got here about 15 to 20 minutes early and we were near the end of the line so get here very early so that you can choose because they all load you in the same entrance and then you just start spreading up and down the train and picking out your seat there so if you if you want that best seat get here very early also you can sit on either side of the cars on the the mountain side or on the river side so we would suggest sitting on the river side for the best views. So when you get on the train, you'll actually see the river running right by you. Sit on that side of the river if possible. One little tip that I read before we got on the train was to try to sit in the center car. I noticed on our train today there were 11 cars. And the reason why they recommend you sit in the middle is because the engine actually switches sides. And so you don't want to sit too close to the engine or you're going to be getting blasted out with smoke and noise. So the center car is a great spot to be because no matter which side the engine ends up being on, you're in a good spot. The next thing to know is that the word loop is used very loosely when they describe the Georgetown Railway Loop. Yes, the train may loop around at the end a little tiny bit, but the scenery that you see on the way up the mountain is the exact same that you see on the way down. And I would recommend, like Matt said earlier, sitting on the river side. But if you want to actually see, I think the better side is the river, but you'd want to switch sides of the train if you're wanting to vary up what you were seeing. Okay, you can see the train right behind me here, at least the engine, it is just finishing up a run here. Uh, next thing to know about it is the narration along the route. So while you are on the train going up to the top, 
they don't do any narration. They just let you enjoy the ride without having to, you know, hear them talk or whatever. You just get to enjoy the scenery and the breeze and all that. But on the way back, they do give you a narration and give you some information about the history of the train and all that, which was great, except that I couldn't hear him. It just wasn't very loud. So that was kind of my only complaint about that is it was just really hard to hear him. If there was any noise going on at all next to me, I couldn't hear what they were saying, which was kind of a bummer because I thought it was kind of interesting. And we'll get into it a little bit later here. Just a few brief things about the history of this train. As far as pricing on this train goes, as I mentioned, this was a lot more affordable than the train ride in Leadville. For my family this year, it was 34, I believe, for adults and 28 for children. And a child is up to 15 years old, so I have a 15-year-old. I was pretty geeked about that. So for my whole family to ride the train, it was $180, which I thought was a steal because everything in Colorado is so expensive. Okay, the next thing to know is about the ride itself. What can you expect once the train starts going on the tracks? Well, the train is gonna go about 14 miles per hour. It's gonna go up a 4% grade at times. They call it a loop because it does kind of make a loop uh, in the canyon, like it loops around like a big U-turn, um, like a horseshoe bend type of a thing. But it, it's not, a, as we've mentioned, it's not a loop itself, but it does kind of loop around, which is interesting. And it crosses this bridge behind me here, which is the Devil's Gate High Bridge, which that's really cool going over the top of that bridge. You're staring straight down into the river there. That's a pretty cool look. And there's actually two other small bridges that it'll cross as you get up into the canyon. So that's pretty cool. You're gonna see some really big boulders that have kind of come down the hillside. You're gonna see the gorgeous creek down below you, or at least off to the side. You will also see I-70. So this is the same canyon that I-70 travels through. And for most of the ride, you're below I-70, so you don't really think about it too much. But then it does get up to where I-70 is, and you're actually very close to the freeway right there for a moment. That's kind of detracts from the ride, I would say, a little bit for sure, because, you know, you suddenly you're not really feeling like you're in nature anymore. You're just right there by semi-trucks. But for the most part, it, I mean, it is a very scenic ride. It's a beautiful canyon that you're tra traveling through. Of course, I-70 is a beautiful road to drive. So it is a great area and all that. And then once you get up to the top of the canyon there, it stops for about 15 minutes and it lets you out. They have a little museum up there, a little gift shop, of course, that you can buy a few things. The museum wasn't much at all unless you were like really into train cars or something like that. Not a lot to look at in there. It is just a short 15 minute stop and then you're back on the train and coming down. I think the thing we enjoyed the most about the actual train ride was just the breeze, the open air, like we sat right by the window with no window, we sat right by the open window and it was just breezy and really pretty and I think that's the thing, just relaxing. It was just a nice relaxing drive. It was kind of nice actually to smell the, the steam in a way. And so it was just cool, it was a great, great ride. A little bit about the history of this train. Georgetown, just like everywhere else, was a mining town. They had found silver here and it was a pretty big deal. And this train was actually in the 1880s when they started doing this train and it would go to and from Denver a few times a day. But as things slowed down, the war happened and then the depression happened, people really were not riding this train anymore. And so they actually tore up the track, sold it for scrap, and it sat with nothing on it for years and years. In the mid 70s, a little interest in the train came back and they started building the track. And from our tour, they said in 1885, they relaunched this Georgetown train and they've been giving rides ever since. And now they do about five rides a day. They start at 10 in the morning and they end around 3.30 in the afternoon. And this is in the summer season. But yeah, that's something that kind of came back and I thought that was kind of interesting. Okay, the next thing to note is that they have themed rides. And so this is a big deal to kind of spice it up, I'm sure. They're doing this train ride all day, every day. So they have these themed rides and they have a couple of different types of rides for each season. So like in the fall, they'll have pumpkin rides and fall foliage rides. In the winter, I think they have like Christmas or Santa rides. They have beer rides, Autumn Fest. Uh, Sasquatch rides. Oh, that was something to, to expect too when you go on the ride is you'll just occasionally see these little Easter eggs like 
Well, maybe I won't tell you what the Easter eggs are, okay? But just keep your eyes peeled as you go through. You, you might see Bigfoot, so, um, and a few other things. So anyway, they have these themed rides. So that's something you may be interested in. Even if you've already been on the train, you might want to go again on one of these themed rides, or if you're timing your trip up with a, one of those themed rides, you might like that. One thing we didn't do is a mining tour, but they offer a few different tours, including short tours for those who need accessibility or who might be claustrophobic, as well as longer tours underground, including haunted tours. You can also pan for gold on these tours. If you love all things Colorado mountain towns or maybe want to know more about them, check out our Colorado playlist. We've been on this big 10 day trip checking out all these mountain towns and want to share what we learned with you. Have a great day and until next time, go West Young Traveler.